All right, Kenman here and Streamline, let's go. Dying the scales of the Kubi Femius today. I'm all set, facade covering everything. Boom, let's go. No wasting time. Um, if you did not see part one, uh, I will put it right up here for you to check out. In part one, we took this apart. We got it prepped for the dye process, which is what we are going to do right now. So this is now part two. I am going to pick this up. We're going to drop those scales down right there. Move the blade and everything we don't need out of the way. We'll look at this stuff later, but right now we need to get this in and get started. This is number what 12 now? Holy cow. 12 knives we have done and we have these little hooks. We're getting them on the little hooks so we can drop them into the die and remove them easily. And here we are. Let's go. Minute 12. Let's dip them in. Kubi Femius. We want to make sure we get all the air bubbles off. I've said in the past is if there's an air bubble that's on that scale when you dip it in there, uh, the dye does not sit on that spot as well. And therefore it will not dye evenly and you will have this different colored spot. So I like to splash them around in the dye for a little bit, make sure they're nice coated, and then drop them down and we'll let them sit. Boom, just like that, easy squeeze. If you couldn't tell, this is a dark green. Um, I did one other shade of green so far. We'll look at that in a second. Um, that one is was an emerald green and it turned out more blue. This is definitely a dark green. Those scales are in like a tan. So that tan color uh, is going to have an effect on the dye. When you do a dye, I'm gonna shift this over a little bit. We can see that still kind of churning over there. But when you do a dye, the dye can only um, affect the color that already exists. So that one was tan like this CJRB Lago which is an awesome button uh, button lock knife. Um, but see how the scale this G10 is tan. And so compared to like a white, if I were to take a blue dye and put it on both of these, this is going to be a brighter blue and this is going to be a duller, more subtle blue because this color is going to affect the end product. Makes sense, right? So this one starting off tan is going to be more dull, but I'm going for a dark green with this. Uh, a lot of the normal knives that I would get if I was not doing a dye, one of the main colors I would look for is like a dark green. I really like that look. And uh, yeah, this green right here on the Ferrum Forge Gent 2.0, this is actually a yellow dye. And what happens is because dye, it's, it's just a, a, this project, the whole thing is a, a test, it's just to see. Um, it's an experiment. And the yellow, when I took it out for the first initial look to see how it was after a few minutes, it was, in fact, kind of a really light yellow. But I was going for a darker color, wanted to see how it ended up at the end. This does have black scales underneath and some, or black liner, apologize. Um, <clears throat> it, and uh, sometimes the scales are kind of moderately see-through like on this artisan cutlery you can kind of see those little circles underneath that is the uh, frame underneath the scale showing through and so if it's black that black is definitely going to have an effect on the color but I left that yellow in for a long time and it ended up kind of shifting to that green which is ultimately not all that bad this yellow on the Sen Cut Crowley was the same yellow, but I did it for a significantly less time. Since this is an experiment, I was able to uh, use what we learned off the other one and go for a less amount of time. If you can see, you can still see all the way through it. You can see all that inner skeletonized uh, workings. I love it. It's great. This uh, Sencut Crowley button lock is an awesome knife. I uh, really like it. I'm glad uh, the yellow dye turned out the way it did. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, we can look at the reds real quick and we can do a check. Uh, this obvious uh, uh, Vision FG uh, was white and I gave it red. I only had it in the dye for one minute. Got this lighter kind of red. 
Uh, this darker red, this was two minutes on the Kubi Titus. Um, so by doing this one for two minutes, I was able to see how the red really hits fast. It goes quick. Um, I also noticed on the G10, if you bang it against some stuff, see this little white, try to get that focused, a little white spot right there. That is where the dye didn't soak all the way into the G10. And so therefore, uh, when you bang it against something, it can kind of rub off. And that's something to think about. I think on the jade, you will notice it a lot less, but on something that's white, it's going to have a white skeleton on the inside. And so that dye, um, if you scratch it off, can start to show that white a little bit. Let's see where we are at. Okay, so dye is thick. When you, when you initially pull it out like that and you're looking at it right there, it looks really, really dark. But what happens is that dye starts to drip off kind of hard to see at this angle I apologize but it kind of drips off and then you will see that it's actually lighter than it appears so you will need to put it back in for longer unless you're happy with the color that it is we can do a rinse and that rinse will rinse off that dye and give us a true look of what we're actually looking at for color right now but it looks like it is very subtle it hasn't changed very much I'm gonna actually turn the heat up just a little bit Get it a little more active, get it going a little bit more. We don't want this video to be too terribly long. I mean, if I'm stuck because dye takes the amount of time it takes, then we're, we're kind of stuck and I'll have to edit or do something or whatever. We'll see. All right, <clears throat> what else? Uh, I have two different purple ones as well. This CGRB Lago um, was my standard purple, which gave us this really nice color. It really pops great with those additional uh, accents that uh, CJRB put on there from the factory um, but it was jade now I got this purple with those kind of orange oh, looks really cool the other purple that I did is this sweet Zhang Shang flickable chef's knife this was an orchid though so orchid is a significantly lighter purple it'll never get as dark as that one purple was um, kind of more of a subtle almost looks like a jade purple um, but it is cool, and uh, even subtle colors like that yellow is is cool, and it's it's interesting, and you get to try some stuff out. There's a couple of the blues I did. This one is more of a, shoot, can't remember what it was called. This is my standard blue. You can see it brings out the color of the textures a little bit more, too. This kind of has a little wood grain look because of the uh, contouring. You can kind of see the levels of the G10 as it was made kind of stick out more from the the dye uh kubi royal ah oh, what was the name of that color some aqua marine or something like that but uh it's definitely like in the sun and in areas where you can get light coming through it like up here it has more of a kind of a greenish quality to it it's, i know it's kind of harder to tell maybe it, this angles and the lighting in my kitchen isn't always the greatest this other one is the <laughs> Civivi Fair and Forge collaboration Odium I uh, had this one in blue a little bit less it's kind of a lighter kind of a blue jean kind of a color it looks nice I'm liking it the dyes two four six eight ten eleven this is number twelve isn't that fun uh, most recent one I got was this Sencut Watuga, what a cool shape, right? Button lock, got nice action to it. You can flick it out with that little fuller groove. It also kind of has that similar, moderately see-through kind of look that we might be able to do something with. I don't know so much, probably more with this artisan cutlery. You can see those holes through there. This is my first artisan cutlery. I really love the the shine, the extra little, I don't know if it's just the extra polish they put into it when they put it together, but if you look at that, just all the metal all the way around, it really has an extra shiny quality. This is a really cool knife. I'm pretty excited about it. It doesn't have a lot of a fidget factor since it's really only flipper tab, but it has a really nice feel. I feel like this would be a, a good uh, everyday carry that's just going to be like a kind of a workhorse that just opens and closes and does what you want. I already looked at this logo. I love button locks, so any button lock 
It's fun. This one's going to be interesting because you got all the silver, the red, and then the black accents. So you got three different colors we're going to have to do uh, for that tan. See how this tan goes. Seems like it might take a little bit longer. It's a little darker to start. Kubi Koyas. This is the one we're going to do a marble texture. The way I'm going to make a marble texture, instead of doing a heated dye, we're going to do a room temperature dye. We're going to mix it with shaving cream so that I'm going to make a bed of shaving cream and dye and draw the pattern on that. And then you'll push that into it and let it sit for at least 24 hours because it's not hot. It takes a long, longer to activate. And uh, But by doing that, you can make a neat pattern like a marble kind of effect and we can let it sit in there over time and it'll slowly soak up the dye and make that that pattern what color would you like to see on any of these i've asked that every single time this is the civivi damascus mini asticus this is probably the one that i may never die i've actually had these the uh, one that's in there now is one of the newest ones i got but sometimes you get the specific idea for what you want and other ones i'm not quite sure yet so that one i just was like i gotta try this dark green let's go this is the even grow i just wanted to try out the company uh, it is a G10 scale. It is a D2 uh, blade. It's got this huge G10 backspacer piece. Um, so it's kind of worth it, even though it's a really cheap kind of budget knife. It's solid. It feels all right. The materials aren't the worst. And I uh, figured I'd just get it for the collection, test it out, and we can also do some dye experimentations with it. It does have some colored accents that we can kind of use that to play off. Maybe do that two tone with that, that backspacer. The other. Uh, Cheapo I got was this Sativian. This was like $17. But it's crazy how well the action is, how easy it opens. It's solid. You know, budget for sure. Box cutter, way better than a box cutter. I tell you what. Will I be buying a lot of Sativians? No. But, man, I'm, I'm impressed with for such a cheap knife these days. It's amazing what they can make. All right, ah, ooh. Got that a little hot, the angle that was sitting in there. Um, they are darker, let's, let's do a rinse and see. I'm gonna get these out of our way. I'm gonna bring in my water bath. This will neutralize the dye immediately so we can really kind of see where we're at. And if we wanna put them back in, we certainly can. We're going to go ahead and drop them in here because as you can see right away it rinses off some of that dye, gives us what our true color currently is. Try to keep my hands out of the way. Just do a really quick rinse. Basically if you just pull it out and just let it sit there, the uh, dye that's still on there will continue to dye. In this case, it looks like it's dying very slowly, so it's not going to have a major quick effect. But if you were to just let it sit, those little streaks would then end up dying and creating more of a uneven color. And we're going for a uniform color. Okay, let's take these out. I'm going to just give them a quick dry. We're going to take a look, compare them to that other one, and make a decision if we want to put them back in or if we like what we're seeing. I'm going to grab a white towel here. A little better contrast for us. Mm -hmm. Alright, what does everyone see here? They have kind of a... doesn't look green. It looks kind of more gray. Kind of a gunmetal sort of look maybe. Alright, I'm going to try to keep my hands kind of wet. It was that color. So we were tan, and now we're kind of this. We're at 14 minutes. Holy cow. Maybe I should just put it back together, and then we can decide if we do want to make it darker later or not. Because that is not getting to be very dark green. And we don't want this video to be four hours long. It's an interesting color though. We're going to go with it and find out. Uh, yeah. Experiments are what experiments are. So let's uh, dry this one off, put her back together. We'll take a look 
and we can see how much we like it and if we end up taking it apart and doing it again we can do, do that in another video or maybe I won't even make a video and I'll just post the end results but I, I know I have a feeling about this green the way that it got dark like this that it's not gonna get much more green um dyeing i've done i have a lot of experience doing some dye with some frisbees and some other plastic things that uh that i've learned that green sometimes is a tricky color and uh when it starts going i've had some where they just kind of go gray or they kind of go metallic almost and i had a hard time uh one of the baskets that i love to make uh, the old school og cones are green and I tried to make some dyes that looked like that. And it was really hard to kind of copy and mimic that specific color. Um, brighter colors, blues, pinks, oranges, reds tend to work fairly well. It does have a green tinted 60s mind. <laughs> um, so there it is there. It's interesting. I'm, 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 gonna get, I'm kind of excited to just put this together when we're going to find out. I'm going to get this water out of the way. Make sure everything is safe. We need to basically make sure these are just really dry before we put it back together. We don't want any moisture getting in the pivots or getting in anything that could end up causing some corrosion or issues later. All right. Bringing back my board. Get some stuff out of the way. We'll get situated. It's still going to be a longer video, but that's fine. I'm having some fun here on a Sunday, making some custom knives. All right. So, take a last little check. Kind of give these a quick once over, make sure they're nice and dry. Try to get into all the little spots. The back of this, there's no uh, frame and the scale are not recessed. So this whole backside is flat, so there's no extra little grooves that I really have to worry about getting into this one does have a little teeny recessed area for where the, the lock can kind of go but really not that much as far as spots that <clears throat> moisture can kind of get collected so I think we're good I think we are looking stylish all right let's see how simple or difficult we can make this what side should we do first, huh? Probably, let's see, the one with the detent is that side. So if you look on the Kubi, there's a little dent right there, and there's a little notch right there. And so when you put this in and you twist it, clicks in, and then that sits right in that little spot which works great because then you don't need uh, a tool for both sides to put it back together. Uh, what I've done in the past seems to work where I'll take screws and drop them all over the place. I'm going to drop these screws into these two spots, hold them with my hand, and then we're going to take these spacers and just give them a couple twists not fully locked on up see I lost one maybe it's just smarter to do one at a time but yeah dropping that screw through there and then putting that that spacer on there kind of locks this side down and turns it into a half of your sandwich is made make it a little easier this particular knife has uh, very few parts makes it pretty easy for reassembly okay so the blade is going to go in that way which means this one goes down first we have a 
stop. Got the blade. See how simple this one goes together. Right. Oh, you know, and in this case, when you have a lock, I feel like you put the blade up and there isn't as much pressure when you're squeezing it together because that is pinched and the blade isn't forcing it out, if that makes sense. Wow, this is going decent. Don't jinx it, Kenman. When you put a knife back together, you have issues with making sure that you center the blade properly. So you have to be careful. Um, what I like to do is get it just everything loose but together. I'm going to get this pivot going. Luckily most of these are all T8s. The pocket clip is the T6. On this particular one they should just make everything T8s if you ask me. Alright, so let's close this blade. Crank it down to where we think it's just about tight. Maybe a little less. Okay. Oh, that's right. I can just tighten these up. I'm going to go just snug on one side, then tight on the other, and then go back to the other side. Just so we don't have one side super cranked down. Maybe putting a little extra tension on those threads might not be necessary, but I found that if you tighten things evenly is probably the best move. All right. We are almost there. Blade is not quite. Okay. I just want to play. Put the pocket clip on. Put the pocket clip on and call it. Here's my new Weeha little mini driver. I just picked it up. I needed a couple more driver bits. All right, I'm a lefty. This is the right side. Let's go right there. And we're there, kids. Everybody, if you're still here, I appreciate you. Thank you for tuning in. If you haven't and you do like it, go to my channel, subscribe, check out the other die videos. Um, I did just make a, a post for a new giveaway. I'm going to give away. This is the second knife giveaway I'm doing for my subscribers. I appreciate you all. All you have to do is go to that video. I'll link it right here. Boom. And you can enter to win a free knife. And we are there. Pow. Yeah. Get this stuff out of my way. There it is. Finished. What is this? Looks like an air bubble spot right there. That's what an air bubble spot will look like, I think. That's interesting. All right. It is gray. Definitely gray. All right, let's see the action. Opens good. Closes good. Centering is good. Flips out nice. Flicks out great. I love this knife. I'm excited to be carrying it. I do wish it was more green. And uh, I'm just going to just full disclosure. Look. You see that? Right there. There's a little discoloration. That's the first time. I've noticed that. I'm wondering how that happened, but that almost to me looks like that's like an air bubble type of a situation where a little pocket of air sat there and didn't let it die as much. It's it's very subtle. Could have been something that was already in the in it. I didn't really examine it and notice it, but sometimes there's already something like some oil or something that's caught in there and that oil is going to have the dye sit a little different even though you might not have seen it. So always making sure it's very clean before you do it is a big, big step. All right, since we're already here, already at the time, 30 more seconds is not going to matter. 
So let's go ahead and get these all out. Take a look. I always put them on the non. Let's get the lefty side here, right? Well, it's definitely not green, everybody, but it is a new shade. I'm interested. Uh, I kind of, I didn't say anything about it, but like I said, in the back of my head, I already knew that green can be an issue. And, you know, trying it, why not? You can try it. It's, it's, can't, there's no, ugh, this little odium, I tell you, it's a, uh, just too small for my grasp. I can't even fit all these into frame anymore. There we are. All right, everyone, we made it. 25 minutes, 49 seconds. Thank you all so much for tuning in, enjoying it. I love this dye project. It's been great. It's been fun. Lots of crazy bright colors. Lots of there's a dull color going on. But uh, even cutting them in half, I'm still making a 26 minute video, but sometimes when you do a dye, it, it, the, the amount of time that it sits in there is the amount of time it sits in there. Um, if anyone has any recommendations, thoughts, some things that they'd like to see uh, different or done or whatever, if you want it all in one video, that would have just been another 30 some minute video. You want me to do some more editing or you want me to do some time lapse or something. Um, yeah, I don't know. I still have several more to dye. Uh, more projects coming in the future. I got that knife giveaway. Go check that out and get entered if you haven't not done that yet, if it's uh, not too late. And uh, that's going to be it for today. If you enjoy what you see, please hit that like button. Subscribe to see more. Helps me out, and I really appreciate it. Ooh, is that going to be it right there? Stay sharp. We'll see you next time.